everybody. This is Doug Moran, and welcome to the Community Technical WebEx. We usually do these presentations on the first and third Wednesdays of each month. Today, Mike Torello, Pentaho Pre-Sales Guy Extraordinaire, will demo how to customize the Pentaho User Console. If you have any questions during the presentation, please type them into the chat window to all participants, and we'll answer them during the session. I'll also be monitoring the IRC channel, Pound Pound Pentaho, on Freenode. And after the presentation, we'll have time for questions and feedback. Now I'll turn the presentation over to Mike. Thank you, Doug. Hello, everyone. This is Mike Tarallo. I'm the Sales Engineering Director here with uh, Pentaho headquarters uh, in Orlando. I have the pleasure of working with VP of Community, Doug Moran, as always. And uh, today we're going to go through a session on customizing the Pentaho user console. So we're going to kind of do a mix of a PowerPoint and uh, demonstration all in one, kind of anchoring back. Uh, just to let you understand some of my background, some of those who might not know me, uh, I have about 15 years of data integration and business intelligence uh, reporting analysis dashboard type experience, uh, the majority of the years with a proprietary BI vendor. I've been with Pentaho for four years now and uh, leading the growing SC team here in the company. So any of you community members who also want to look for opportunities, uh, you might want to look into uh, possibly being employed by Pentaho one day. It's been a great opportunity so far and looking forward to the future. Let's get started here. So before we go into the actual customization of Pentaho, I do want to relay that the tool suite, or however you want to call it, developer framework, software package, however you want to coin it, Pentaho provides a very powerful BI platform that can be used in many different capacities. Uh, some of those capacities are immediately out of the box, uh, utilizing the Pentaho user console, which is uh, our user interface for delivering information in the form of reporting, analysis, and dashboards uh, very quickly uh, from a, a rapid tool that comes out of the box. But Pentaho also can be customized and integrated in a number of different means or even embedded. So setting the stage first to understand how the software can be uh, delivered or embedded, I have three scenarios that I like to cover. You have integration capability. Uh, that's simply where you stand up a Pentaho by server platform component and then you make services calls from your application. Uh, so you might have an application that calls a web service, uh, a Pentaho action sequence, a content generator, uh, and it uh, basically renders a format such as JSON, JavaScript object notation, or XML, and then you feed that into your own application. So integration is a uh, common way of embedding and integrating with the Pentaho BI platform. You can call other components of the Pentaho platform into your app um, through this method. Then there's the embedding scenario. And embedding is where you actually take your uh, application and you put Pentaho components in it, the libraries, the engines, the reporting engine, the data integration engine, the analysis engine, and then it's all part of your application and then you code either in the form of Java or service calls to the Pentaho jar files and engines utilizing um, development technologies. And finally, there is the method of enhancement. And enhancement is kind of what I'm going to show you a little bit later in the demonstration, is where I've taken third-party content, either stuff I've created from scratch or stuff that's been created from uh, other individual or another package, and I add that to the Pentaho software to make additional customizations to extend the capabilities within the original software package. So embedding can fall under integration, the actual true embedding, and enhancement when you hear that terminology being set. The agenda today is we're going to talk about the slide deck and demonstration, meaning I'm going to go back and forth between actual, you know, demonstrating and showing you stuff and using the slide. So we're going to look at the Pentaho user console, just a quick overview of what it is for those who might not what, what, uh, know what it is. Uh, discuss quickly why to customize, understanding that I'm on the pre-sale side, so customizing has a lot to do with putting a uh, contextual appearance, uh, white labeling and branding to the particular prospects that we're working with. So customizing this could be, you know, part of a sales activity for demos. It also could be part of just look and feel and branding for a particular application. Uh, tools and skill sets needed to customize. Obviously, there's got to be some level of knowledge that you previously have to, to work with the existing software. Uh, discuss methods of simple customization, advanced customization, non-programmatic customization, and then programmatic customization, such as adding third-party components and web filters or utilizing the plug-in framework architecture. Uh, that Pentaho makes available through your community. And then we'll share the resources available, and obviously this recording and links in PowerPoint can be made available to you. User console. 
simply, what is it? It is the default user interface that comes with the Pentaho package. Uh, originally um, developed as a need to provide a reporting portal into the, the many facets of the Pentaho BI suite for accessing reporting analysis uh, and even dashboards or even community dashboard framework modules. Uh, allows a very simple way to navigate, manage, and execute and consume that information. Uh, it's a web browser only type solution, doesn't require any plugins, uh, provides a folder tree for navigation of the reporting content, as well as tools, depending on which version you're using, community or enterprise, to create content in the form of analysis, ad hoc queries, uh, adding data sources to quickly prototype your data, as well as manage and schedule uh, report content. So the console is the quickest way pretty much to deploy uh, any type of BI solution that we offer within the BI suite. Now, why customize this? Well, for me primarily and the SE team, it's for demonstration purposes. Uh, we want to provide the look and feel that is familiar to the prospect. So immediately when I log into the system and they see something that looks like their logo, their color scheme, they immediately know, wow, this can be made to look like my application or it can be easily customized because I did it prior to the demo. Um, the modifications can be made very easily. It gives them that sense of ease of configuration and ease of use, and it looks integrated into whatever applications they might be embedding it in. And then obviously for implementations, particular company branding and white labeling, if they don't choose to integrate or embed Pentaho into their application and they choose to embed the entire user console, they might want the look and feel of that console to at least mimic or be part of their existing application. Uh, and also you might want to be able to control what can be accessed and available to the users. Through co configuration of properties files, um, you can actually turn off certain features and make certain features available um, based on your need. Okay, tools and skills needed. So tools and skills needed range from a variety of web authoring tools, um, a knowledge of languages, uh, as well as uh, graphics design tools, depending on how far you want to push the customization. So inside this bulleted list, I included some proprietary graphics tools and also some open source graphics tools. So Adobe Fireworks, Adobe Photoshop, and GIMP, which is an open source graphic tool, something that allows you to manipulate images easily, allows you to export to PNG, GIF, uh, JPEG, allows you to remove background colors, uh, allows you to create transparent type images, basically anything that allows you author or creation of an image you might want to be able to integrate within the customization of the application. Uh, web tools, Adobe Dreamweaver, Microsoft Expression Web, Amaya, another open source, or a simple text editor. Uh, if you want to modify HTML, you want to add some JavaScript, modify some CSS, uh, you need a way of modifying that through a tool that is easy to use. For example, even positioning of layers, uh, Dreamweaver or Expression Web have a drag and drop interface that allow you to put a layer wherever you like. If you don't have those tools, then you'll have to edit the coordinates for left and right you know, manually. So obviously these tools make your um, customization process a lot easier. Browser plugins. Uh, to debug existing pages, Firebug for Firefox or MSIE developer tools. Uh, interactively look at the changes as you're buying the cascading style sheets or the graphics where they're coming from. Uh, Pentaho does have you know a list of all of the graphics and the style sheets and locations of what's contained, but you might need a tool such as this to identify where these are coming from so you can then locate and, and manipulate the particular file. Uh, an understanding of HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and other associated technologies is very helpful, so you can make those customizations and intercept where you want to make changes appropriately, uh, as well as archive utilities. So, for example, JAR files, uh, which are packaged archives of Java classes, there's also properties files in there that can be manipulated. Instead of going through a JAR routine, let's say, depending on what operating system you're on, you can go right-click on a JAR. Uh, explore it, edit the properties, and write it back immediately, and then restart the server and make those changes. And then finally, Im imagination, uh, more important than knowledge from Albert Einstein. One thing I can't help anybody with is creativity and imagination. If you lack that, then you're not going to be able to go past and push the limit. So creativity and imagination is very important no matter what job you're in. Uh, it allows you to basically work um, to that extra level and show people that you can push the limits of the particular product based on you know, that level of creativity that you offer. Okay, simple customization. So now we'll get into just the customizations. Uh, Pentaho does have an API under the covers. Uh, it's accessible through what we call content generators. There are CGI variables 
or per servlet parameters that can be passed to our different content generators and web services that will allow you basically to interact with security or other parts of the suite. So, for example, modifying an existing login page in graphics. Um, the login page is by default in the, in the JSP directory called pucklogin.jsp. Uh, there's a logo that it's accessed called start underscore logo dot png. Uh, and then inside the mantle directory, there's the logo for the user console called logo dot png. Uh, creating your login page could be as simple as creating a form action utilizing the JSpring security uh, servlet and then passing the username parameter and the J password name parameter. So if you wanted to create your own login page to log into the user console, you can use the simple form action and then obviously web authoring um, to style the page the way you'd like. So I'll just give you a quick example of that. I move into my login here, and we just change this login to HTM. You can see I have my username, Joe, and my password, password. We get to Dreamweaver, which is a web authoring tool that I use, and we look at the login page. You can see it's a simple block of HTML passing in the form action of Pentaho JSpring security check, as well as the J username and the J password. And the end result for this is clicking login brings you into the user console. Now, the redirects and directs are all in our configuration files, and they can be modified as well. But just a simple, quick example of a log page that you create. Now, another more robust example would be using the existing log page that we provide from um, the suite. So what I've done is I actually put this login snippet in a layer. So I can manipulate this layer wherever I'd like. And the reason for that is I've also put in a very simple uh, image called the back. Now, obviously, I do this for demonstration purposes, but you would utilize your own web authoring. Let me just do edit, undo, delete. And what I did is I use PayPal a lot, so I just you know took the PayPal homepage. And I'm going to save that. And this is just an image as a background. Watch what happens when I go to the Puck login screen and hit refresh. Okay, now it's like an integrated login page with PayPal. Now, obviously, it's just an image, but you know, prospects don't really know that. They just make it look like their own look and feel. But from this aspect, now I have a customized login page utilizing the Pentaho login page. And then if I change it wherever I decide where the graphics are, I can simply just move this login window where I'd like into a different location, hit save, hit refresh, and that page, that uh, login uh, button will go wherever I want. So that's just a quick way of modifying the existing login page and making it display and looking integrated if you'd like to do that. Okay. Now, another thing that we can do, if I log in here, we go to the user console, you're going to notice there's a look and feel of the styling, right? Notice that this is blue. You'll also notice that this launch page, it's not our default launch page. This could be completely modified and changed with HTML and JavaScript, and there's locations to make changes to that. We'll discuss that in a moment. And then up in the upper right, you'll see the logo uh, placeholder. So that's simple customizations for login. And now we have simple customizations for logo. So modifying existing console logos or launch pages that we provide. Um, the logo is listed under mantle logo. Uh, launch pages are under mantle launch. And that basically allows you to either manipulate the launch page the way you'd like, um, utilizing the links to the external programs like the uh, analysis view or the ad hoc query or the data source wizard and kind of gives and ties in that look and feel as well. So if I go briefly here, what I'm going to do is just cut out this PayPal logo. And I'm going to do a control C and copy. And I'm going to go to the logo, paste it in, click save, go back to my user console and hit refresh. And now you'll see that the PayPal logo is now part of the application. Now, a couple other things that I do is uh, the way I access these logos is I use some server calls that kind of are all over the place to the main logo. So you can see when I made the logo change up in the corner, it also took part of my custom reports uh, modification as well. So it makes me modify my demonstrations very easily when I'm ready to get on calls um, you know, from time to time, back to back. So custom logos and image bundles. Okay, so advanced customizations, modifying existing graphics and graphic bundles and style sheets. So inside the installation in the web apps directory under Pentaho Mantle, you'll have a, uh, a long string, I believe that's called a GUID, um, or an identifier, uh, and we compile the software, and it takes the images and it puts it in an image bundle, and then there's cascading style sheets that reference the locations of those images. These image bundles can very easily be manipulated 
um, with the software that we provide. So I'm um, so with the, the uh, software that is available for authoring. So if I just go into Pentaho Mantle, see image bundles that are available here. And depending on which images you want to modify, you can just open up that image bundle. And let me just do a quick zoom in on that. Okay, and then from here, you could just modify the image bundles with your different utilities. So if I just wanted to take this particular uh, folder tree, whatever, and I want to make it a, a different color, I hide it here. I go into my modification, edit, cut, edit. Obviously, you need a little knowledge of using these tools. But then I can go into my filters. I can to adjust color, hue and saturation. And then here I can make some additional color changes to the folder tree. Okay, that's if you want to exist, uh, change existing images. If not, just create your own if you have that ability, and then you'll make changes to those image bundles. And you'll also notice that the use of Firebug um, or browser debugging tool to identify those objects. So inside this tool set, I use Firebug extensively, and I go into my inspect. And then this allows me to hover over, and you'll notice as I hover over this particular folder tree, here's the area where the uh, the image location is, or the background. So you can see this is your background. This is the actual image location. You can see clearspace.gif. I click spect again, and we hover over this particular icon. Here you can see that it's coming from images new reports.png, and it gives you a little sample of that. This will allow you easily to locate where these images are and changes. And the same thing for this, the cascading style sheets. If I hover over one of these little uh, textual elements, you can see the element style here, display inline. You can actually make changes. If you look on the left where it's highlighted, you can see the changes happening real time. Um, so this will allow you to make changes to the actual um, graphics. So depending if you want to change the font, you want to change the element style, you want to change the size. Um, this basically will allow you to make those changes real time and you can see them happen and then make the changes to the appropriate style sheet. Simply click on the style sheet and it will show you the, the actual the name of the style and things you can change. So Firebug is very helpful to help inspect the areas that you might want to modify. Okay, so that's uh, another screenshot of utilizing Malver, Inspect, and Firebug for uh, inspecting elements in a page. Hey, properties file. So this is where we go into a little bit more. Uh, it's non-programmatic code changes inside the location of the archive or the web app. Um, you have your events and your live directories, and there's a jar file. Depending on the version of the software, it'll be the version number dot uh, jar. Now, I obviously support Enterprise Edition, so they'll be GA. Yours might be stable, or depending on which version of the software you're using, it'll have that representation. What you can do is use an archive program to open up those files. And what we'll do here is navigate into my solution under Pentaho, Server, BI Server, Tomcat, Web Apps, Pentaho, WebNF, and then, not classes, Live, or Lib. And locate that particular jar file. So in this case, I'm gonna look for the Pentaho <coughs> Mantle jar file. And let me do the date modified because I probably have mine already modified. Bear with me one moment. What is the name of it? Minute Mantle. Okay, so So they have Mantle 3.8, in this case G8 file. I use a tool called 7-Zip. allows me to explore the archive, navigate to the different package location, and you see that there is under the server folder something called mantle settings.property. I go in and edit that file real time and make my changes, such as show menu bar equals true, show main toolbar, show logo panel. Uh, you can set these to true or false. Uh, change the plugin perspective URL, so if you want the actual dashboard, or in this case we have some dashboard capability. This allows a launch page to uh, uh, start when you log in. So certain features that are available can be turned on and off and toolbars can be modified directly from the properties panels. Here's an example of the properties example. Okay, <clears throat> and 
and here's an example of the page where the configure visibility of the logo was gone and a startup page has been displayed. Okay, adding web filters. So this is now utilizing third-party program, okay? In this case, it's called the URL rewrite filter and allows me to add that to my installation and based off of some configuration and setup that I've done, interprets the session of the user or the role that's logged in and then based off of that value has some conditional logic that allows me to rewrite the areas that are interpreted by the user console, such as style sheet locations, JavaScript <coughs> uh, image files. And the added event of, um, capability from that is I'm able to add a little personalization miss this stuff here. I'm able to add a little personalization to the user console. So notice if I log out, log back in, I'm going to log in as the user Susie. And upon logging in as the user Susie, you're going to notice that now, now instead of blue, it looks green, and instead of PayPal, it says Publix. And Publix is a uh, popular restaurant in the south. Um, I think it's moving its way up north, too. What do you mean? It's a supermarket. Did I say restaurant? Yeah. <laughs> I meant supermarket. Um, sorry, guys. So uh, Publix, uh, you know, kind of did this not for Publix. I just did this because you know Publix is out here in Florida. But you can see that the color scheme is green, not blue, and the logo says Publix, not PayPal. And the way this achieved is by utilizing this URL rewrite filter. Okay. So based on a popular uh, mod, mod write for Apache, the URL rewrite filter mm -hmm. basically is compliant web application. You deploy that to the same application area as Pentaho, and then you set up the, the code to do that. So just to give you a little example of that, here's my Pentaho installation, server installation, BI server, Tomcat, and web apps, and Pentaho. And you'll notice that in the web INF directory, I have something called URL rewrite.xml. If I edit that location, you can see here, session attribute. This is all part of the documentation that's available with URL rewrite, but what it does is it reads an internal session variable. It's one of many ways. Um, and I have the operator equal, and the name is user session, and the value in this case is Joe, or the value in this case is Susie. So, what was that? You want me to increase the sound? Um, I don't know how to do that through text pad. I don't do, there's probably a setting in here. Edit, reformat. Do you know how to do that? No. <laughs> I don't know if there's a zoom tool. I'm trying to increase the font for you guys so you can kind of get a little bit better view. Edit, reformat. See. Sorry, guys. Let me see. I don't know how to increase the font to get this a little bit bigger. But I have this documented uh, in a place. I'll show you where that resource is. I don't know how it's coming across uh, over the WebEx. Uh, but basically, you can see there's a rule. That rule interprets a session variable, and then based on the value you provide, you can see the redirect. If it's mantle logo.png, redirect it to another PNG. Um, if it's logo BG, re re uh, redirect it to the green logo BG. So I have a theme directory with different images, and inside that theme directory, it changes the image package based off of the session variable. Now, I'm also using a Pinto action sequence to set session variables. So when it logs in, it grabs the session, sets to your session called Joe. And I have all this documented in a section that we can follow up a little bit later. Hey, we had a question. Can yes. the uh, conditions be parameterized? I'm not sure. That's up to the actual filter itself. Um, so if the filter has parameterization capability, um, then yes. Obviously, you can always write your own filter to do that. So the plugin framework, so for those of you who don't know, Pentaho introduced the, the notion of a drop-in extension capability. Uh, what it really means is that it doesn't have to be a Java program. You don't have to write Java. It could be completely HTML and JavaScript and then an edit of some of our plugin XML files. But uh, what this enables you to do is add your own menu bars and toolbar items. Uh, it automatically recognizes registration of new content types. Um, and, for example, our data access component, which allows you to upload a CSV file or enter a SQL query, that's an example of a plugin. That plugin was created by our core engineers and community contributions, dropped into our solutions directory, and is now made available immediately within the Pentaho platform. Um, so it allows you know, content browsing. There's no manual web app development required. Uh, you don't have to create any custom type of JSPs. 
on. So this plugin framework allows you to extend the capability of what's available in the user console. So, hey, Mike, before, yeah, before you go on, yeah. this, one, one other question on the, uh, the filter. Is that just a standard J2EE filter? Oh, yeah, it is. Let me, you know what, let me bring this up so it's in the recording for the WebEx so you guys can see it. Um, another resource that I tout is something that this, the Solution Engineering or Sales Engineering team um, produces. So I give back to the community through the use of collateral and information, obviously, again, supporting enterprise version. But there's a lot of information that can be shared and utilized on the Sandbox. So sandbox.pentalo.com is a SE-sponsored, SE-created type of resource. Uh, there's a section here called Samples and Downloads, Tutorials, etc. But this uh, custom logo or custom image uh, capability is available from the Sandbox. Type in custom logos, you'll get a, a, a dynamic user cust, uh, console logos um, section with a video and the setup of it, and it tells you where to download the actual uh, the X action and all the pieces you need. The actual servlet filter itself is available here, and it brings you to the tucky.org site and talks about the URL rewrite filter, which is a standard J2EE uh, jar file that you just drop into the live directory. That was actually, that's pretty good, Doug. It kept me honest. I forgot about that. So inside the Pentaho directory under uh, the live directory, the URL rewrite, rewrite jar file has also been dropped into this directory. And you can see URL rewrite 32.jar. All right, great. Thanks, Mike. And uh, just one more quick advertisement here. Um, advertisement. <laughs> Uh, it, it, for a, a deep dive on a lot of these uh, topics with uh, exercises, the uh, Architects Bootcamp that Gretchen teaches uh, pretty much covers um, all of these types of topics. So uh, I promised her I'd, I'd put a plug in for her class. Perfect. That would be great. Oh, so the plug-in framework, an example of that is, for example, look at the tools menu. Okay, so James Dixon, our CTO and Chief Geek, uh, has done a lot of extensive work on using plugins and utilizing them for our products. So he's actually given me given me a couple that I could leverage, such as log files. Right, I could actually interactively look at all my log files and enable real time log viewing um, directly within my um, my interface here, um, as well as a simple Google search. Right, so from this menu, I can throw in a, a Google search. Just just brings up a search engine. Um, integration of console integration capability, right? So enable the edit button. You'll see the button gets live. If I disable it, it goes away. Uh, lower the edit button. Reset the edit button. Enable the save button. So this shows you some integration with the console um, through the use of plugins. Um, one other one that I'd like to show, which I don't think is going to work right now, James Dixon put in this um, a Google map, geo map, uh, which enables us to access our metadata repository and create a Google map. Now, I'm trying to get that working. In this case, it's not working. Uh, I have to find out why. But you can see the icon for it has immediately registered itself and displays within the toolbar. So that's part of the plugin framework. Uh, more information on the plugin framework is available on our wiki. Um, we'll, we'll make that available in the main home page that we have um, that advertise this particular WebEx. Okay, so that's pretty much it for the customization capability. We'll be ready to take some questions. Uh, so some of this is documented in our knowledge base. Uh, this slide deck is a great resource, and the evaluation sandbox has additional information. Uh, we'll make sure we post these links available to the community WebEx page that uh, has the information about this particular uh, series. Okay, Doug? All right, thanks, Mike. So if there's uh, any, any last questions, uh, Poke through the uh, chat window. I'm also going to unmute the call-in callers, so you can uh, uh, ask that way. If you're not asking a question, uh, please mute mute the phone on your side if there's any background noise. Unmuted. So uh, if you've got a question, just shoot away and we'll wait for about a minute and then uh, move on to the end.
right. Well, thanks, Mike. That's uh, that's all we got for today. I'll be uh, posting the recording of today's presentation within a day or so on the community wiki. That will include Mike's slides, some of the uh, resources and uh, uh, information that you've seen here, links to the sandbox, uh, et cetera. Next community WebEx is on Wednesday, April 20th. Ricardo Perez from Expand IT will show off their Fusion Charts platform plugin, which provides uh, an alternative to the other charting libraries that currently come with the platform. In May, the Melissa Data folks will demo their data quality integration with PDI. And sometime soon, I'm hoping for an update and demo from the Saiku team. Saiku, the uh, alternative analysis tool, eventually replacing JPivot, and I believe is very close to RC1. In order to make sure that these presentations are useful, please fill out the short survey that will pop up when you exit the WebEx. And that's it. Goodbye, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye.